Welcome to this course, Introduction to Cybersecurity Literacy. This is Lesson 16, Functions of Malware. In the previous video, I described four common kinds of malware, viruses, worms, Trojan horses, and bots. In this video, we're going to explore seven common functions of malware, so we'll see some of the things that malware can do. Malware can have a practically infinite variety of negative effects on a computer or a network. The only limits to what malware can do are the creativity and the ill will of the malware programmers. But we'll stick to just these seven functions for now. These seven functions are overwhelming system resources, running malicious adware, running spyware, running ransomware, creating backdoors, disabling security functions, and creating botnets. Malware function number one is overwhelming system resources. Some pieces of malware, especially worms, are programmed to reproduce and spread as quickly as possible. Malware like this can often overwhelm computer or network resources. The spreading worm might use up so much of the network's bandwidth that there just isn't enough left over to perform legitimate functions on the network. Some malware creates innumerable files on a computer, clogging up its storage drives and eventually slowing the computer's performance. Other malware might use up so much of the computer's computing power or its working memory that the computer is unable to run legitimate programs effectively. The common thread connecting these examples is that malware somehow overwhelms the system that it attacks, rendering the system sluggish or even useless until somebody removes the malware. This particular kind of malware attack is relatively less common today than it used to be in the past. Today's malware programmers are usually trying to make money, and there is generally not much money to be made from obviously compromising a system like this. When something is obviously wrong, users quickly figure out that they have a problem and they do something about it. Most malware today is more sneaky. It operates quietly in the background, preferring to remain unnoticed by the user. That's not to say that the malware doesn't still affect computer performance, but today's malware is less likely to affect it so quickly and so dramatically that users are likely to notice that something is wrong right away. Malware function number two is running malicious adware. All of you have probably seen adware before. Any software that displays advertisements is technically adware. The web is obviously packed with adware because most of the free websites that we use are funded, at least in part, by advertising revenues. Much of the adware that we encounter runs on a web browser which simply displays the ads. Common, everyday adware might be a nuisance, and in some cases, people argue that it breaches user privacy, but in general, the costs of adware are the price that we choose to pay for the free websites that we use. However, some malware programs install mean, nasty, malicious adware onto computers themselves without the user's consent. Rather than just displaying the paid advertisements that support websites, these malware programs can display ads that have no legitimate connection to the user or to the websites that the user visits. Malicious adware might display unwanted pop-up ads at inappropriate times, or it might install an unwanted toolbar on your browser window. Furthermore, malicious adware sometimes presents ads that most users find distasteful or offensive. Malware function number three is running spyware. Spyware is malware that spies on your computer activity. One example of spyware is keylogging software that secretly records the keystrokes that you make on your keyboard and then sends that data to some third party. Other kinds of spyware might secretly monitor your internet activity and use your browsing information to target you with malicious advertisements. Spyware programmers want their spyware to remain hidden on your computer for as long as possible. You normally will not notice a spyware program until you're looking for it, and even then, they're programmed to be difficult to find and easy to overlook. Malware function number four is running ransomware. Ransomware programs create screens that look something like the one that you see here. Let's read what this message says. User alerts. 
your documents have been encrypted. They can only be decrypted for $500 American dollars. If you do not pay this decryption fee by 14 days, your documents will be permanently deleted immediately. Do not call the police or risk automatic permanent file deletion immediately. Click below to begin decrypting your files. You will need a valid credit card. Thanks you. Sometimes ransomware is a total lie. Cyber criminals will write programs that will display messages like this one, even if your files are completely unaffected. And sometimes ransomware really does encrypt your files. In either case, you shouldn't play along with a scheme like this. Even if your files are really encrypted, there's no guarantee that the cyber criminal will unencrypt them for you if you pay the ransom. And if you do pay the ransom, some cyber criminals will use your payment information to steal your identity or to suck you deeper and deeper into an even more expensive scam. If you fall victim to ransomware, you are much better off restoring your system from backup files than you would be if you paid the ransom. If you diligently back up your system, then ransomware should be a nuisance for you, but it shouldn't be a catastrophic loss. Malware function number five is creating backdoors. Many legitimate programs create links between your computer and another computer system so that your computer can receive important updates. For example, Microsoft releases security updates on the second Tuesday of every month, and computers running Windows will download and sometimes install these updates by default. Many malware programs also establish connections between an infected computer and another system. But the connections that malware programs establish are secret, and they're intended to strengthen the malware, not to strengthen the computer. Using these secret connections, cyber criminals can update malware to make it more harmful, more difficult to remove, or more difficult to identify. These secret malicious connections are called backdoors. If a malware program creates a backdoor, then it can use that backdoor to modify itself or to install even more malware programs onto the infected computer. Malware function number six is disabling security functions. Some malware programs can disable security functions on a computer. For example, it could disable antivirus software, or it could block the system from installing security patches. Malware that disables the security functions on a computer tends to last longer because there aren't any security functions left to stop it. And these programs also tend to leave computers more vulnerable to other malware infections from other sources. Malware function number seven is creating botnets. In the previous lesson, I discussed bots. Bots are malware programs that can control your computer without your input. For example, they might automatically send emails, or retrieve web pages, or change computer settings, or submit usernames, passwords, or financial data into a website. Some cyber criminals will create bots that they can control through back doors on a user's computer. These cyber criminals who control networks of malicious bots are called bot masters. Bot masters will develop vast networks of thousands of computers that they can control through their bots. These bot-controlled networks are called botnets. Bot masters can use their botnets in a variety of ways. One of the most common uses is to crash a website. They do this by asking all of the bots on the botnet to visit the website at the same time. If the botnet is big enough, the website won't be able to handle all of the traffic, and it will crash. Or, as a variation on this attack, the botmaster might threaten to crash a particular website at a really inconvenient time, or maybe even at a financially ruinous time. The botmasters tell the owners of the website that they're going to crash it unless the owners agree to pay a ransom. For example, gambling websites are popular targets for botnet attacks. Botmasters will threaten to crash gambling websites before or during the Super Bowl, which is the busiest time of the year for most gambling websites. Okay, in this video, we've covered seven different functions of malware. Overwhelming system resources, running malicious adware, running spyware, running ransomware, creating backdoors, disabling security functionality, and creating botnets. Now, this list is by no means complete. There are many other malicious possibilities, but these seven should give you a pretty good idea of what you're up against. 
In the next lesson, I'll help you to understand the sources of malware, so that you have a better idea of how to avoid the attacks that I've just been describing.